Hello everybody and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about uh, rocks can be modeled, how to create a rock physics model in Blueback Rocks QI. First of all, thank you for signing up. We plan to run this session over the next five weeks, so please sign up. On the right hand side, you have all the topics. If you want, uh, oh, tell us what you want to see. We can add more at the end if you want. If you want to find out more, uh, please contact your Seagal account manager or email at sales at seagal.com. The format, each session will last between 20 and 30 minutes. Each session will be recorded and you will get a copy of the recording via email approximately 24 hours after the webinar starts. Ends, sorry. The recording will also be loaded on the Seagal YouTube channel. If there is time for questions, can you please submit your question via the chat tab in the GoToWebinar console? The summary of today's video. So we have uh, our situation. We have a new well with all the suite of logs except VS. The challenges will be to create a VS log, but using different rock physics model uh, per facies. Our solution will be to use uh, rock physics. First, we will create a rock physics model uh, per facies. We will parameterize those rock physics model, and then we'll uh, create a new VS log. So let's jump into Petrel. So here on my Petrel uh, window, you can see two wells. I have my well A on the left hand side where I have all the suite of logs. I have VP, VS, porosity, density, visual water saturation, and facies. The well B here on the right hand side is my new well. I have VP, porosity, density, visual water saturation, facies, but I don't have VS. You can also right away see that I have some issues with my VP and density log. They have they have a lot of logs. So before doing any uh, rock physics modeling, I will first clean those logs. To do that, I will use well log editor. So well log editor and rock physics modeling can be found in Blueback's Rocks QI. So Blueback's Rocks QI is a bundle of seismic reservoir characterization, investigator, rock physics, and some tool from toolbox. So here you have different tools. So you have some utilities for these utilities, blocky modeling. Then you have uh, different workflows. So the tool are ordered or is ordered by workflow, but each tool is independent. So you have a forward modeling workflow, an AVO classification one, property prediction, inversion, EEI extended electric impedance, NetPay, seismic forward modeling, and ODC. So today, what I want to do first is to use a well log editor. So well log editor allows you to uh, perform different actions on different well log. So here I'm going to select my well B and my VP. So you can see on the right hand side, I have my input and you can see it's very, very noisy. So this tool, as I said, allows you to perform different actions. So you have cut, vertical, lateral wear, fill, bulk shift, extend, join, deep match, smooth this pack is the action that we're going to use. We can also do a manual edit, a filter, and free end. So if I select smooth and this pack, I have now the different parameters for this uh, action. So for the filter tab, we have different options, mean, median, trend mean, Gaussian, conservating. And for each, you need to select a filter size. For the despiking, you have also the option to do not despike, undefine, or shave. So here, I'm just going to use a large filter size, 8%, and then I can apply the action. So at the moment when I click apply, the action is made on a virtual well log. Nothing is created yet. On the right hand side, you have now uh, two, two colors. So the well uh, in gray, you have the input and in green, you have the edited well log. So you can see the difference. You can also see the difference at the bottom where you have an histogram that shows the P velocity with the uh, range of p velocity from my input and my edited well log. If I apply another action, you can see that both actions are seen over there. I can cancel the last action and apply it if I want. So 
you can apply different action, deselect one and so on. Once you're happy with uh, all the actions that you've performed, you can output your result. You can either overwrite or create a new well log. So I have created new well log uh, earlier. So here is my VP and row filtered. So now I can go into my rock physics model because I want now to use those well logs because they're much cleaner. So for the rock physics modeling, the first step here is the creation of the rock physics model. We have different rock physics model available. So you can order the, all these rock physics models. So here we have all, but we have VS prediction, VP prediction, and so on. So I want to select VS prediction. If there is a rock physics model that you really like, but it's not here in the list, please contact, please contact us and we will uh, do all our best to add this into the list. So for each uh, rock physics model, you can select the rock physics model and you will have some description on the right hand side and also the reference. So here, what I want to create is, let's say, Castagna Mudrot line, constant cement, and contact cement and friable cement. So this will just create the rock physics model, but we will have them to parameterize them. So here I can put them, I can add a suffix and they will be created in the folder called rock physics modeling. Then when I click apply, if I go into my input tree, I have now all the different rock physics models. So you can see right away the two rock physics models that I've created earlier, and those four are the new ones. If you open the settings, you have the info tab, the statistics, but in parameterization, in parameters tab, you have all the parameters needed for this type of rock physics model, and also uh, the description, the, the plot of the, the rock physics model. You have a style tab and a description where you have the similar, the same description that you have here with the reference. So now that we have created our rock physics model, what we want to do is perform our rock physics modeling and parameterize our rock physics model. So to do that, we go into rock physics modeling. So this uh, tool allows you to create a rock physics template. So you will use here templates from your Petrel uh, project. This means that uh, you can then use this template on different type of object. So the first step is to create your rock physics model. So I will call it video. And this object will be saved is in, in your project. So in my wells, I have two fascias. So this is a very simple um, project. I have only sand and shale. So here, you have different contexts. So first I will take care of my sand. So I will call it my reservoir. And I will want to use my rock physics model only on the reservoir. So I use a discrete template. I use my fascist A and I select my sand. And for my uh, sand, I want to use a friable sand. So now at the bottom, I have the similar settings that I was able to see on the Friable Sand uh, uh, parameters. On the right hand side, oh, sorry, you can, uh, you, have, you, you have the possibility to display the rock physics model, but you need some data. So here is the rock physics model without any data first. So here, this rock physics model is well known to be displayed in an AI versus VP over VS plot. So here is my rock physics model. So for this rock physics model, uh, you need two other parameters, which are your mineral set and your fluid set. So to create a new mineral set, you can use this icon over there and it will pop up this window. So this is all the minerals that you have in your sand or in your, your room, fascias. So here you have all the type of mineral, so quartz and so on. If you want to add a new mineral, you can select, let's say, aragonite and add it into the list. 
Then for each of the mineral, you have uh, the density, the bulk modulus, and the shear modulus. So these are the default parameters. If you want to type uh, an other type of uh, other uh, numbers, you can type and change the values. Then you have also different mix mixing laws uh, for all this um, mineral. You have void rust hill, void upper, rust lower, ashen script man, and ashen script mine upper and lower. The second parameter in our raw physics model is a fluid set. So again, you can open a new one, and here you select the density and the bulk modulus for water, oil, and gas. And here you have the two gas mixing law, uh, woods and brie. So then we can parameterize our rock physics model. So we have the porosity, the porosity critical, the effective pressure, and you also have the coordination number and shear reduction. So here you can, for example, play with the coordination number, and you can see right away that our rock physics model adjusts on the fly. If you want to compare with our real data set, we can select here our well, our well A, which is the well where we have all all the old suite of log, and then select porosity, VP, VS, rho, VP over VS, V shale, water saturation, and AI. Then when we update the plots, we'll have now all the points over there in our cross plot. So here we have the cross plot with our data, and let me add the legend. And we, color, we can color our data so by all our dimensions, but also per facies. So here you can see right away that I have my shale here and my sand. I'm not really interested in my shale right away because I want to focus on my sand. So I'm just going in the data and deselecting my shale. So here you have in this rock physics model, uh, it's uh, a function of the water saturation and porosity. So now if I want to uh, improve my rock physics model, I can color my uh, points by, let's say, water saturation and improve my modeling using this. You can also display the legend here. So this raw physics model at the moment is not perfect, but it's a demo data set and my mineral data and fluid data are not perfect. So just for now, it's okay. You have different uh, cross plot plot available. So you have the matrix plot. So the matrix plot would plot all the continuous dimension against each other. And, you and then you have the QC log track. So here by default, you have uh, three um, track, but you can add more. So we can add porosity, water saturation, and for example, uh, fascias A. So now we can zoom. And this will be the result of our uh, modeling. If we go here, now we can apply this rock physics model onto uh, our data set to compare the original data set and the model data set. So to do that, we go here. You, you can apply this um, rock physics model on different type of data, so well, model, or simulation. So here, we want to apply this rock physics model on the well A, where we have all the, 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 the wells, because we want to compare the modeling and our real data set. And then you have, for the rock physics model that we have selected, the different inputs that are needed. So we can use porosity, Pressure and porosity, porosity critical will use the constant from the rock physics model. Then we'll use water saturation and oil saturation. I don't have gas in here. And then I will use my fascias. So now I can update my plot and I have two sets of points. So if I color now by data set, I just need to change the color of one of my well. So now in black, I have my original well, my well A. And in uh, red, I have the uh, modeled rock physics model data. So that follows my rock physics model. I have also the result. You can see the result also here on the log tracks where 
where I have my sand, I have now um, my well A in red and the original well in black. So you can compare your rock physics modeling. So the next step is to uh, do the rock physics modeling for our sand. So I can go back here, deselect my sand, bring my shell, and here go back to my rock physics template and add another tab in another line in my my uh, table. So this will be for my non reservoir. I will also use discrete fascist A and shale. And for this uh, rock physics model for the shale, I want to use Castagna mudrock line. So now the Castagna mudrock line is well known to be displayed in a VP VS plot. And you can see right away, I have now my Castagna mudrock line with uh, my well A overlay. So this uh, particular rock physics model is just a constant because it's a linear equation between VP and VS. So here I have the constant that I can, that I can manipulate and change to parameterize my rock physics model. So here, if I move, it will update over there. So if I go back, to rock model now, you have the possibility to uh, apply a context filter. If I want to apply to, to have a look at only the input uh, needed for my non-reservoir, I can see right away that uh, the Cassania mudrock line needs the VP as an input. So if I want to display my output from my well A, I need to apply my VP here. If I could update my plot, I have now if I remove the sun, the I would just increase the size. I have now the data of my real well data in uh, black and the model data in red. And now if I go here in my log, uh, QC log track, I have now my VS everywhere. So, now this is perfect. I have uh, created two rock physics models, one for sand, one for shale. I have parameterized them to my real well data. But what I want to do is create a VS for my well B. So now I will just deselect here the well A because I don't want to create a VS for my well A. I want a VS for my well B. And here for the input, I will just deselect this one and select the VP filter that we have uh, created earlier. So if I select this, so this is all the inputs that are needed for all or both rock physics model. For all you have also uh, the three type of the outputs, you have VP, VS and row, but I don't want VP and row because I have already been, uh, they're already there. I just want my VS. Then I can uh, put a suffix and when I click apply, so I've already done it here earlier, you have, now, my new VS that I've created, which is for my well B. So you can see that quite quickly, I have uh, filtered my VP and row log, created two rock physics model, parameterized them using my uh, well-known data, my well A, and then use this rock physics model on my new well, my well B. So this is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we love your feedback, so please uh, let us know how we did it and uh, if you want to see more, what you want to see. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to uh, send an email to support.geo.com. And don't forget to register for the next video, which is next Wednesday, where Pat Connelly were going to talk about uh, theoretical versus actual Kai projection. Thank you very much and I will you have if you have some type from some question please do not hesitate. Thank you.
So there is no question, but if you have any question later on, please do not hesitate to send us an email. Thank you very much again for watching and bye-bye.